Corn Belt states like Iowa and Nebraska lead the nation in corn, ethanol, and cattle production. And as Michelle Rook found, each part of that business model benefits from the other, even during these inflationary times. In the heart of cattle country, producers are well aware of the synergism between cattle and corn production, and that includes Nebraska's Mark Jagels. Nebraska sits in the golden triangle with livestock, corn, and ethanol, and I think that is so true of what we can produce and how we produce it so cost efficiently and effectively. Over 75% of the state's corn is irrigated, and that consistent crop is the reason so many feedlots have set up shop in Nebraska. But Jagel says that corn also goes beyond the state's borders. Over 40% of the corn grown here in Nebraska is utilized through livestock across the United States. So livestock is a very, very vital part of the corn industry. The corn and distillers grain fed to cattle in Nebraska also differentiate the finished meat product. Cattle producers say the role corn and DDGs play in the ration has helped differentiate their product in the marketplace. Steve Wellman, director of the Department of Agriculture, says that product is demanded by consumers at home and abroad. Nebraska beef is sold around the world. Last year in 2021, we hit a record level of value of $1.81 billion of Nebraska beef sold internationally. The corn-fed beef program is part of the Nebraska Straight from the Good Life marketing campaign and core to their long export relationship in Southeast Asia. Japan had been our leading customer for export markets, but South Korea has really grown recently, and actually South Korea is now the leading uh, destination for beef from Nebraska. And USMEF figures indicate U.S. red meat exports utilize 537 million bushels of corn and 3.4 million tons of DDGs annually. In the big scheme of things, I mean, for a corn producer, I mean, that's adding almost $3.5 billion worth of income to a corn producer by the corn that is utilized in the livestock along with the distillers. Cattlemen in the nation's top corn and ethanol producing state of Iowa also rely on the corn but also the distillers grain that the industry provides. In fact, David Trowbridge says it's been a game changer in cattle rations. And they're extremely important to us as far as feeding cattle, uh, both in a price-wise, uh, uh, energy-wise. Their inclusion rates run from 25 to 45 percent, depending on the price, but DDGs have cut their feed costs. At times, it's, it's been significant, probably 15 percent. He says distiller's grain also improves the palatability of the ration and improves consumption. It has made us all better bunk managers. However, even with historically high-priced corn, he says they're able to make it work on their balance sheet. We're just dealing with a lot more revenue, uh, expenses going into the cattle, but more, ca more money coming out of the cattle also. So our net returns, our margins, uh, really haven't changed a whole lot due to the high price of corn. And he says the whole reason they have the cattle industry in Iowa is because of the ability to feed local grain. So it's a close link that they value. With U.S. Farm Report, I'm Michelle Rook. Thanks, Michelle. Well, freezer meat, is that a growing a trend that's here to stay for the long haul in a major way? Customer support is next. Is there a future in small meat plants?